Iowa won the toss and elected to receive, so Cole Netton will kick off, and Jordan Kanziri is back deep for the Hawkeyes. Gorgeous day, the temperature around 60 degrees, under beautiful blue skies and very little wind to speak of as we begin. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Todd McShay's down on the sideline. Delighted to have you with us. Iowa State is 0-2, Iowa 2-0. Netton kicks it off to the five-yard line to Jordan Kanziri. Weaving along the far numbers and down at the 26. The well, Iowa begins first and ten, led by Jake Rudock, second year starting quarterback from Weston, Florida in South Florida. Now a junior. Had a big week in their come-from-behind win here last week against Ball State when he threw for a career-high 322. He was great down the stretch. Went 9 for 11 on their last two drives, both of which resulted in touchdowns. They rallied from 13-3 down to win. Mark Weissman gets the first carry of the day and goes ahead for two. Jevin Miller made the stop for Iowa State. Yeah, I was a team offensively that is searching for their identity, and that's running the football. You'll see Weissman, they want to get him on track, and the quote the coaches get him lathered up. The problem I was having, Sean, is Jake Rudock, as you just mentioned, is this team's leading rusher, which doesn't bode well for an Iowa offense. It felt like Weissman got banged up early last year and then wasn't as effective late in the season, so they tried to minimize his exposure early in the year. But as a result, they really haven't found a rhythm in the running game, and they don't have one there either. As Corey Morrissey dropped Weissman for a loss back to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and 10. Well, the quickness of the Iowa State defensive line is winning the battle against the massive offensive line of Iowa. They get penetration forcing Weissman to bounce, allowing the pursuit to catch him from the backside. Damon Bullock comes in on third down as the running back, good receiver and pass protector. He's on the right hip of Rudock, who took the shotgun snap and takes off running. As Chris said, he is a running threat, and he got about eight there, but he's still two yards short of the first down. Drake Birch made the stop for the Cyclones and a good start for ISU on defense. They force a three and out. Yeah, especially on the road in a rivalry game. You start your defense. That gets the offense pumped up, and the defense gets excited coming out for the next series. Jarvis West back for the punt. Second in the country in punt return average in large part because of the 82-yarder for a touchdown. Last week against Kansas State in Ames, he calls for a fair catch of the Dylan Kidd punt. And he made it at the 20. Good kick. By Kidd, 49 yards. There is a flag down on the field. Of course, this is a non-conference game, and these are Big 12 officials on the field, led by the referee Alan Eck. That's the Iowa State Conference. During the kick, holding number 17 of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Damian Lowry called for the penalty. That'll move the ball back to the 10. There are Big Ten folks in the replay booth. Crowd making noise, trying to make it difficult for Sam Richardson. And the Cyclone offense as they take the field for the first time. Redshirt Jr. out of Winter Park, Florida. Opens in the gun. Design roll to the right, and an on-target throw out to the 27-yard line. Dondre Daly the catch, first down, gain of 17. A good job by Richardson letting this play develop. It's a high-low pattern. The tight ends in the flat and ebbs. And Dante finding the spot, sitting it down. The ball well-placed, low and behind. They marked it on the 26. Looked like they shorted them by about a yard. 16-yard gain. Aaron Wimberly, the running back. Richardson faked it and went ahead for about three. Sam Richardson, like Jake Rudock, is his team's leading rusher, and neither team wants the quarterback to be the rushing leader. Threw for 185 in their loss last week to K-State. That was a big disappointment. They were ahead 28-13 and wound up losing. 
32-28. Wimberley to the 33, perhaps the 34. Let's welcome in Todd McShay. I think he's the big play specialist. Jarvis West reminds me a lot of Dexter McCluster. He's an offensive weapon. He can beat you throwing the ball, which is a surprise, in the return game, as you talked about, but also as a slot receiver. This guy's very explosive, and Iowa's trying to limit the big plays today. West off the field on third down and three. Two tight ends into the ball game for the Cyclones. Option look. Wimberly dumped for a loss. John Loudermilk, the veteran senior safety out of Carrollton, Ohio, with an outstanding play for a loss of two. And playing the option football, it's all about discipline. Nate Meyer, number 34, the defensive end, does a good job of stringing out the play. And coming from the alley, Loudermilk comes up and makes a perfect form tackle, wraps his arms, forcing the kick for Iowa State. Colin Downing, a true freshman, on to punt. And Matt Vandenberg is back deep for the Hawkeye, standing at his 28. Ooh, Vandenberg got run into as he tried to field it along the near sideline, and Iowa State's going to be penalized. Kenneth Lynn, one of their starting cornerbacks, guilty of the penalty. Sean, they're going to have field position. I wouldn't be surprised. Kick catching interference, number eight of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. If they, take, if they take the shot downfield right there, Lynn mm. has got to have the control to pull off of that, seeing a returner come into his field of vision. A good opportunity for Iowa right now. And perfect. If you're Iowa State, you're thinking if you're Wally Burnham, defensive coordinator, you want to play it safe because it could be a shot over the top in this type of field position. There's kick catch interference, and then there's that kind of kick catch interference. Yeah. There's that's... Wally Burnham. The Iowa State defensive coordinator. His team's had a lot of trouble stopping the run. They get to Rudock, who throws incomplete. He tried to throw on first down. And he got hit by Mitchell Myers, the defensive end. A three-step drop, you got to get rid of the football. I mean, he had time to throw that, and your offensive lineman, a three-step drop, aren't going to sustain the blocks as long. Get rid of it. That's on Rudock. That's not on the offensive line. See the big left tackle, one of the best in the country, Brandon Sheriff. He is playing today, injured a knee last week against Ball State. There was some question during the week, but he did practice, and he is playing. Tavon Smith. Running the reverse. And he did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. So this is a rivalry game, and it has a history of a lot of trick plays. There's Sheriff. One of the top offensive linemen of the country. Todd McShay has him ranked number two among tackles, and we'll get more from Todd about Brandon in a moment. But it's big for Iowa that he is able to play. Yeah, he's a powerful guy, especially in the run game. Third down and nine. Bullock again in as the third down back. He goes out and catches the pass over the middle and has a first down. That was easy. On third and nine, they get 14. Luke not made the tackle for Iowa State. Well, one of the things is, is that Rudock is getting a pre-snap read. By getting a pre-snap read as a quarterback, you're already able to eliminate receivers. He knew the check down was there, allowed the patience for the linebackers to drop, dump it to the guy with skill, let him get the first down. Bullock stays in now as the tailback. John Kenny, a converted linebacker, the fullback. Did a good tackle by Brandon Jensen. Their starting fullback, Macon Pleva, was a question mark today. Suffered a neck stinger, shoulder and neck stinger in practice during the week. So Kenny, who was a linebacker just a couple of weeks ago, has moved the fullback today. Second and 11, no score. More than five and a half minutes played. Quick drop again by Rudock. Tavon Smith out of bounds. Chased out by Nigel Tribune. 
Jake Rudock would prefer to run an offense with a little bit more tempo. They did that last week, and they got in rhythm. And the reason why quarterbacks want to do that is because defenses can't adjust or disguise coverages, so it's easier to read. And they also had to go quickly at the end of last week's game. They were down by 10 points with three minutes to go. They scored two touchdowns in the final three minutes to beat Ball State. Quarterback draw, and he is fighting for the first down. Got very close to that yellow line. Jevin Miller made the tackle. Austin Blythe, the center, trying to aid the cause as he was shoving Rudolph along the way. Fourth down at inches, and they're going to go for the first down. They've had a lot of problems with their field goal game through the first two weeks. The Hawkeyes are two for six. Kicking field goals with two different kickers having had the chance. Uh, you want to send a message to your offensive line that we believe in you. Let's get this first down. Weissman the tailback. Kenny the fullback. Weissman picks it up. Just six feet, 240 pounds. Kirk Ferentz says he's going to be a fine fullback in the NFL. Talented, good hands, and a good push by the offensive line. You see Scherf jumping over people, getting the second level, and Weissman does a good job, not only on that run, but all runs of always falling forward. Play action pass, Rudock dumps it over the middle to Weissman, and he gets belted forward. Got eight. Alton Meeks, Devlin Cousin made the tackle for the Cyclones. Now early on, Sean, Jake, to me, he looks like he's poised in the pocket. Doesn't panic, keeps his feet in balance, and is able to go through his progressions and take the easy five yards if it's there. That's a sign of a quarterback maturing and growing up, and the difference from last year to this year is that skill. Throws for a first down. Tavon Smith couldn't break the tackle of Nigel Tribune, but it is a first down for the native Canadian from Toronto, now a junior at the University of Iowa. Well, this is just good recognition on Iowa's offense as part of seeing the soft coverage, and you're going to check out of that whatever play you have into a three-step drop, run a little hitch, and you'll take that all day long. Bullock the tail back. Following the new fullback, Kenny, there's a flag thrown in the offensive line. Corey Morris, he made the tackle for Iowa State. It's down. Holding. Number 63, offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Austin Blythe, the center, veteran, junior, from Williamsburg, Iowa, making his 21st straight start for the Hawkeyes. Big penalty. Solid player. A lot of times when there's penetration, like you see from the Cyclone front four, offensive linemen get a little nervous, and they start grabbing on and tackling from behind. Four starters back from their offensive line that went eight and five for Iowa last year. Rudolph, plenty of time. And plenty of running room for Damon Bullock. Upended as he crossed the 15. Luke not. They had to stop. Help from Sam Richardson in the area. Gain of 19. You're playing zone, and you have to cover zones. That time, the Cyclone defense had two linebackers in the middle of the field. Jake Knott was way out of position. He has to work to the curl to the flat to be able to break up on that football. Two tight ends for Iowa. Typical Iowa drive that we're used to seeing in the past, not so much this year. Ball control, mix of the run and pass. Weissman carried down to the 10. Kawan Floyd, a backup safety, made the tackle. You would have to think, Chris, that Iowa will really try to hammer the run today. Iowa State's given up 267 yards per game on the ground and their two losses to North Dakota State and Kansas State. Well, they have to, and not only for that reason, because they think they can exploit the Cyclones, that's who they are, and that's their identity. 
They stick with the two tight ends and the power run with Weissman who has a first down. Inside the five. Went down as he tried to avoid the tackle from Kawan Floyd. First and goal for the Hawkeyes. Well, this is called a stretch lead play. The fullback is going to lead, and Weissman has the ability to cut up wherever, and what you're seeing is the push by the offensive line, Todd. And, Chris, I've been really impressed with the play calling by Greg Davis, offensive coordinator, the balance here, and getting the young quarterback, Rudock, in a rhythm early on. They talked about tempo being so important. Weissman down to the two. Well, they need to settle on a primary ball carrier in their first two games. Weissman had the most carries, but he only had 16. Last year in the game against Iowa State alone, he had 35 carries. Well, they want him not to get dinged up early in the year. They also realize they need to get him more into a rhythm and the offense as a whole. Second and goal from just inside the three. Weissman with blockers out in front. He stumbled down. He would have scored, but he just tripped on this field turf and went down back at the four-yard line. He was going to walk in untouched. Yeah. That's why he's going to be a fullback in the NFL. And you can see sometimes when you get a big hole like that or you see all that green in front of you, you get eyes going and your brain starts working faster than your feet. And the result is that a good tackle by the five-yard line. <laughs> Could be a huge play. Now it's third and goal, the 15th play of the drive. With Rudock in the gun, they bunch three receivers to the left. Tried Bullock on the inside run, and he's down to the goal line, but not in. And the crowd immediately letting Kirk Ferentz know that they want Iowa to go for a touchdown. It appears they will. Now you can see right here he's very close and is short and I, I agree with this call Sean you're at home it's a robbery game you want to get something going your fans into it and if you don't get it you certainly have the cyclone offense backed up in horrible field position great call try to punch it in yeah, you have the veteran offensive line the powerful running back you're playing a team that's at all kinds of problems stopping the run this is clearly the right play and it results in a touchdown for Mark Weissman Mick Ellis will add the extra point. The freshman up and good. We talk about a typical Iowa Hawkeye drive. That was it. Nine minutes and 54 seconds to go. 45 yards, 16 plays, as Todd pointed out. A very nice mix of the run and pass. Yeah, and this is a good decision by Weissman. The reason why the tailback is so deep is because he has to make a decision whether to jump or drive through it. And right here, he's going to drive or take the vision, see feet and traffic in front of him, and have the wherewithal to jump over the top. Good job and a good surge by the offensive line. And Weissman is showing some vertical, getting in the zone. The big guys just nice. pushing and grinding. Nice job by the new fullback, the converted linebacker as well. Kenny went out to the left and knocked the defender on his backside. So it's 7 0 Iowa as Weissman scores his second touchdown of his senior season. He's from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. 19 players from Illinois on this Iowa team. After the state of Iowa, they have more players from Illinois than any other state. Their neighbors to the east. So Marshall Kane will kick off. He has a strong leg. And it'll be a touchback. His eighth touchback in 11 kickoffs this season. So they've had a lot of time to rest and think about it on that Iowa State sideline, the offense, as they watched Iowa keep the ball for nearly 10 minutes. Um, remember last week, Iowa State went down early by two scores to the Wildcats of Kansas State. So they've been in this position. They don't panic. They know they have the ability to score and to answer. The 
Just the second possession of the quarter for Sam Richardson and the Cyclones. Evandrick Neely, the running back, as they spread the field with four wide receivers. Richardson ran out of time, got it off for a gainer out to the 30-yard line to Dondre Daly. He got five. Reggie Spearman, the tackle for the Hawkeyes. The Cyclones go quickly. Swing pass to P.J. Harris, and he has a first down before he got ridden out of bounds by Desmond King. P.J. has a lot of speed for the Cyclone receivers, and they want to try to get him in the ball in space. Jarvis West, excellent block on Bo Bauer. He does it all, Sean. Runs, passes, catches, and throws a block for his buddy. Jarvis West, part of the three wide receivers to the right. He's in the middle of those three. Inside run, Devondrick Neely. An eight-yard gain as we tick down to two minutes left in a fast-moving first quarter. Like their counterparts, they've been struggling running the football. They feel like both Wimberley and Neely can get it done if they can get a little more push on that offensive line. But also, those running backs have to be responsible for making the eighth man in the box miss. They're doing a better job of it, and they think they both have the skill. Sam Richardson, the ball carrier. He has the first down. Bo Bauer made the tackle. All right, Dave, thank you. Wild game there in Blacksburg. We welcome those of you who watched East Carolina beat Virginia Tech. Here at 7 0 Iowa. We're late in the first quarter. PJ Harris, the catch there for. Iowa State, he crosses midfield to the Hawkeye 46. It'll bring up second down and two. John Louder made the tackle. Both teams punted after their first possession. And then on Iowa's second possession, they had a nifty drive. They went 16 plays. Nine minutes and 54 seconds to score a touchdown on a fourth and goal on a one-yard run by Mark Weissman. Vondrick Neely carries for Iowa State, and Reggie Spearman made the tackle. It's another first down for the Cyclones. And to summarize, Iowa's come out and established both the run and pass game, but really their focus was getting Mark Weissman and feeding him the football. They're doing a good job of that. The offensive line is doing it, and Iowa State has a nice little mitts going with a little run and a quick passing game. Sam Richardson zips one for a short gain to the 39. Devondrick Neely, the catch. Quinton Alston, the middle linebacker and leader of this Iowa defense, made the tackle in what will likely be the final play of a very fast-moving first quarter. The end of the first quarter, Iowa. Leads 7 0 on the second touchdown of the season by the senior Mark Weissman. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football presented by Cars.com from sold out Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. More than 70,000 fans on hand. To watch the 60-second meeting in this great in-state rivalry. Really, the entire state stops today. Either you're a Cyclone or a Hawkeye in this state. It's my first Cyhawk game, and the one thing I notice, and this is true with all rivalry games, the pads crock a little louder. Guys are hitting and flying to the football, and this is a physical football game, which we expected to see. It is Iowa leading 7 to nothing as we go to the second quarter, but Iowa State is on the move. Cyclones 0-2 on the year, lost to North Dakota State in their opener, and then lost last week to Kansas State, a top-20 team. And they blew a 15-point lead in that one. Sam Richardson's pass is batted down. Drew Ott 
who was the defensive player of the week in the Big Ten last year for his great, well, last week rather, for his great performance against Ball State. Over here is Drew Ott, number 95. The thing I love about smart defenses and defensive ends know if they can't get there to try to get in a throwing lane, and that's exactly what he does. First incomplete pass for Sam Richardson. Both he and Jake Rudock are five for six passing. On third and six. He can run. He does run, and he has a first down. Chased across the boundary by Greg Maben. But they keep the drive alive on the scramble by Richardson. Yeah, poison the pocket has been his biggest improvement. Right there, Iowa loses contain. Contain is an outside defender that has to force the ball inside. He does a good job of reading it and making the decision to get to the sticks to keep the chains moving. Sam's a redshirt junior from Winter Park, Illinois. Second leading rusher last year is their leading rusher this season. Is it to Devondrick Neely? Down to the 28-yard line. Mike Hardy made the tackle. You know, guys, we talk all the time about the zone read option, the triple option, now in college football, the quadruple option. But the simplest form is the run pass option with a mobile quarterback. Sam Richardson on that last play picks up the first down because he optioned off that cornerback. The cornerback stuck with the receiver. He gets the first down. We're going to see a lot of number 12 running the football today. Richardson zings one down the sideline, incomplete. His intended receiver, Tad Ekby, was running out of bounds. With Jordan Lomax in coverage, it'll be third down and seven, and this is right on the edge of what Paul Rhodes told us was the range for his kicker, Cole Nett. And Iowa State has not attempted a field goal in the first two games plus this year. I think Paul trusts his offense, and remember, I was a tough defense, especially in the red zone, because they do not like the blitz. They like to just rush four. Now, they could change it up here to give Richardson a different look. 12th play of the drive for the Cyclones after the 16 play touchdown drive for the Hawkeyes. Richardson throws incomplete intended for Neely and he was hit just a fraction early by Quentin Alston. And that'll keep the drive moving for Iowa State. Pass interference number 34 defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Goes out. You're going to see they're going to run a little F option route, and he's going to option off Quinn Austin, number 52. This is kind of a zone matchup, and Quinn does a good job of jumping him, but he needs to take a better angle and avoid contact at all costs, especially in that third down and tough situation. They announced the wrong number. They announced it against Nate Meyer, but certainly seemed to be on Austin. <laughs> So they pick up the flag for pass interference. And that brings up fourth down and seven. So here's the first field goal attempt of the season for Cole Netton, whose career long is 41 yards. And this one is. Good. So a new career long for the sophomore from Ankeny, Iowa, 47 yarder. And Iowa State is on the board. Paul Rhodes upset on the far sideline. He wants an explanation about the flag they picked up. We'll try to find out about that when we come back. But we're back, and let's go back and take a look at the Third down and seven play for Iowa State when originally Quinn Alston, the man Chris just circled, was called for pass interference and they picked the flag up. And Todd, you got an explanation from the officials on the field? I did. I talked to the referee during break and asked him why they picked up the flag. He said, contact was at the line of scrimmage. It has to be beyond the line of scrimmage for it to be a pass interference. Well, they got that wrong then because it was about three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Contact was made, or the line of scrimmage was a 29. The contact was made around the 26, so that's a miss. And they did kick their first field goal of the year on their first try, and then called net and has a touchback. Good. 
So back to back long drives for these two teams. Jake Rudock, the last time I was on the field, took them 55 yards in 16 plays, a drive that started at their own 45 after a kick catch interference penalty against Iowa State when they ran into the punt returner, Matt Vandenberg, before he could catch the ball. Kenneth Lynn was called for that penalty. Rudock on the drive was five out of six for 47 yards. And then Iowa State just went 13 plays, 46 yards to kick the field goal. Jordan Kanziri is in at running back. For the most part, they've gone with Weissman and Bullock. Rudock pulls it down, takes off running. Nice cut. Only got about six before he took a hit in the back from Luke Knott. One of Jake's strengths is his decision making. That last series, finding the open receiver and hitting it. And the other thing Jake needs to do is lead, needs to learn to slide feet first. We're seeing this all over college football in the NFL. Guys just don't know how to slide. The last thing you want to do is duck your head because then your head becomes the target. Lead with your feet on your slides. Well, he's a smart guy. He's a pre-med major. As Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday he's taking classes that I can't spell. Jordan Kanziri <laughs> waves his way through the defense to the 39-yard line and a first down. Darius White made the tackle for Iowa State, a gain of nine. An underappreciated skill for running back is vision. Right there, Jordan Kanziri saw nothing was there at the point of attack. Trusted his line to cut off the backside, make a good jump cut to get positive yards. They don't have a rusher with more than 100 yards through the two games. And Rudock, their leading rusher through two games, had just 53 yards rushing. He had to throw it more than they ever have under Kirk Ferentz in these first two games, but the bottom line is two hard-fought wins. And a nice run again by Kanziri out to the 44. Sean, Brandon Sheriff, one of the top offensive linemen in all of the country. There are a lot of different reports about his medical situation this week. Well, I talked to three different sources before the game that said that he had a medical procedure in his right knee on Monday. Tuesday, he was back at practice with a limited role. We saw him on Thursday, full go, and he starts today. Kirk Ferentz said, this guy, that's just how he's wired. It's too good to be true. Kanziri yanked down by Mitchell Myers just short of the first down. It'll be third down and one. Must have been a very minor medical procedure. He had it on Monday and he was back practicing the next day. Came back for his senior season. Felt that he could get better. Wanted to continue to enjoy playing for the University of Iowa. He's from Denison. Two tight ends on the field. John Kenny is the fullback leading the way for Weissman. Found a nice hole, crossed midfield, got the first down to the 46 of the Cyclones. Let's give a little love to Jordan Walsh, number 65, the pulling guard. You see him pulling right there with a nice kick out block and is able to open up the hole for Weissman. What I love about Weissman, there's no east and west in him. It's all north and south. DJ Mutcherson, Kamari Cotton Moya made the tackle. Rudock taken down from behind. Corey Morrissey rushing from his blind side. It's a sack for Iowa State back to the Iowa 48. I think Brandon's going to be a good offensive tackle in the NFL. I think he'd be a great guard for that very reason. Right there, Morrissey beat him with a quick move inside. Now you can say that's the knee that's bothering him, that he couldn't move. But I know that he wouldn't make that excuse, so we won't make it for him. Morrissey, senior, right there in Ames, Iowa. Grew up a Cyclone fan, wanted to play for the Cyclones, and is living that dream. Timeout called by the Hawkeyes, who lead 7-3 in the second quarter. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. For 
the 27th year, the Army ROTC units from both of these schools ran the game ball from the visitor's stadium to the home stadium. It's a tradition that celebrates this great in-state rivalry, honors the Iowa veterans and current service members. About a 130-mile run. You saw they were greeted by fans at the old state capitol building here in Iowa City yesterday. Hawkeyes leading 7-3, second quarter, second and 16. Damon Bullock with some blockers. Took the swing pass to the Cyclone 40. Corey Morrissey ran him down. They'll need four for a first down. This has to be an alert on the film. Bullock is the screen guy for Iowa. And this is a nice job of guys in the offensive line. You see Sheriff's, Sheriff's uh, athletic ability getting out there and getting his body on corners. That's one thing that makes him so appealing to NFL scouts. Preseason first team All-American by many of those services that do those ratings. Five wide receivers for Rudock and his slant is dropped. Looked like a very good throw and Matt Vandenberg could not hang on. He had some running room as he slanted toward the middle. Huge drop. Yeah, to keep a drive alive against your rival, you got to make a play. And that ball is perfectly delivered to Vandenberg. Hmm. Big break for the Cyclones to get the ball back. Have a little rhythm on their offense, too. Well, Dylan Kidd will punt. He's the son of John Kidd, who punted for 15 years in the NFL. Fair catch made by Jarvis West at the six-yard line. 35-yard punt. Well done again by Dylan Kidd. Sixty-second meeting all time in this great in-state rivalry. They first met in 1894. They went a long time without playing from 1935 to 1977. The series resumed. They played every year since. Iowa at one point won 15 games in a row. Iowa State won in an upset in 1998. It's been a pretty even rivalry since. In fact, the Hawkeyes have won for the last six. Excuse me, the Cyclones won the last time they were here in 2012. Iowa won last year at Ames. Aaron Wimberly will try to dig out of the hole at the six-yard line. He did nicely. Slid out near the 12 for a gain of six on first down. Good job of mixing it up by Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator for the Cyclones. I think it's time to get Jarvis West involved a little bit. Even throw him a little screen. Get him in the backfield just to get him going because he's probably the most explosive player they have on that offense. One of the best coaching hires of this offseason was Mark Mangino, terrific offensive mind. Former head coach of Kansas. That pass incomplete. That looked like it went right through the hands of P.J. Harris with Reggie Spearman in coverage. It'll be third down and four. Yeah, just to go to your point, I think Mark Mangino does a great job. They try to go into the game getting the ball to eight or nine different players. Why? He wants you to defend the whole field, and their offense forces you to do that. They try to stretch you in the passing game, horizontally and vertically. So they wanted to try to run the ball on the perimeter more today against Iowa. Pistol formation, Devondrick Neely, the running back. Sam Richardson faked it to him, was running out of time and threw a floater incomplete through the hands of Neely, who probably wasn't going to pick up the first down even if he had been able to catch the ball. You know, guys, John Loudermilk, the strong safety, number 37 for Iowa, is doing a great job pre-snap. He's working over, communicating with the other defensive backs and linebackers and making sure that they have guys in place to bracket the explosive wide receiver, Jarvis West. It's been really effective so far. What he's disguising is a cover three or an eight man in the box, and right before the snap, he's dropping back to a too deep look or safety look, which is causing a little confusion for Richardson and the receivers. Timeout called by Iowa State. Paul Rhodes agitated again. And as he tries to get the attention, the officials will get the attention of the always attentive Reese Davis back of the studio. All right, Reese, thank you. Texas Tech's won two ball games, but they've kind of squeaked by much more difficult 
than anticipated going into those games. A lot like Iowa. Just kind of squeaking by and not, not hitting their peak. But Iowa's always been a team that gets better as the year goes on. And that's what Kirk does. They, they keep grinding. They know who they are. And they stay with who they are. The prior play was an incomplete pass. The ball should have been returned to the previous spot, which was the left hash mark. Therefore, Iowa State will not be charged a timeout. Play clock will be reset, 25 seconds. Allen Eck, the referee. We mentioned before much of the audience joined us while we were just on ESPN 3. It is Big 12 on field officials. That's the conference that Iowa State plays in. Big 10 replay officials, Iowa's conference. Unusual to have one of these great rivalry games that doesn't involve two teams from the same conference. Matt Vandenberg makes a fair catch on the Colin Downing punt. Good kick. Iowa started the 39. That's a 50 yard punt. Tonight, ABC's Saturday Night Football. Butch Jones and a very young Tennessee team. Talented. They're on the road. Taking on Trevor Knight in the fourth ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Presented by Wells Fargo at 8 Eastern Time, 5 Pacific on ABC tonight. First regular season meeting between these two schools. We saw Oklahoma last week, and boy, did they look good. But they're stepping up a bit in competition level today. Yeah, they, they look great. They look great everywhere. Quarterback, defensive line, secondary linebackers up and down. They're very good. There's an injured Iowa State player. It's Jacob Dunning. Sophomore from Leander, Texas. Backup offensive lineman. He's out there on the punt team. It looks like a right leg injury. Perhaps a right knee. See, he has the knee braces on both knees. Jacob's going to be right here, and he's with that part of that wall. And see what happens to him. It's a tough because you're you got to stand still and have a big defensive lineman run into you full blast. And it looks like his knee just gave way. That's why they put those big guys back there to protect the punter. But it's a tough position to play because you just got to stand there and absorb a blow. I'm going to take him directly to the locker room. On this picture perfect day in Iowa City. 60 degrees at kickoff, almost no wind and hardly a cloud in the sky. Kinnick Stadium sold out. Sean, you almost get the feeling that the tight ends have to get involved for Iowa. That's part of their offense and who they are. Jake Rudock to throw on first down. Down the middle and caught by the tight end, Ray Hamilton. Good call by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, and a good call by Chris Spielman. They're on target for 33. Uh, it's, it's what they are. It's who they are. Their tight ends are always part of their offense, and when they're in 12 personnel, that's one back and two tight ends. The defense's alert goes up. Well, this is run, run, run. But Greg Davis switched it up and exploited the coverage with a great read again by number 15, Jake Rudock. He's seven for nine. He's gone over 3,000 yards for his career passing now, the 11th Iowa quarterback to do that. Devontae Martin Manley picked his way down to the 24-yard line. Corey Morris, he made another tackle. He's off to a terrific start this season. He was honorable mention all Big 12 last year. Yeah, he is a good player. I mean, he really is a solid defensive end. And the difference with a lot of these guys for both Iowa's defensive line and Iowa State's defensive line there's not a lot of substituting. We don't see that very often in today's day and age of college football. They're Ironmen for both sides. Second and five. Mark Weissman, nice cut back to the right. <laughs> Appears to have another first down at the 18. Darian Cotton made the tackle for the Cyclones. His brother Jordan was on the Iowa team last year as their leading kickoff return man. And their dad, Marshall, played at Iowa State. He's into this rivalry. Excuse me, played at Iowa. Well, Marshall I, and Jordan both played at Iowa. So I wonder who they're cheering for today, their alma mater or their 
son and brother. Whoever wins, be a front runner. <laughs> Damon Bullock couldn't turn the corner. Nigel Tribune up from his cornerback position. You know, Iowa doesn't have the speed at their tailbacks or the explosiveness to run outside. Where are you effective? Do what you do. There's right up the gut. Here we come. Get behind 68 and follow him. Inside, not outside. Iowa State 0-2, and Paul Rhodes said the biggest problems that needed to be fixed were along both lines. They've had a hard time stopping the run. And they've had a hard time running the football. Iowa's rushed for just 52 yards so far. Damon Bullock again. Alton Meeks made the stop. Paul talked about how he had to dismiss two defensive tackles this year, and that certainly has hurt this Cyclone front four. In fact, he called them NFL caliber type players. And David Irving and Rodney Coe both dismissed for off the field issues. And he said it definitely hurt that defense, but as a head coach, those are the tough decisions you have to make. Third down and eight. They are in field goal range, but they've had all kinds of field goal problems. Bullock carries for no gain. The crowd didn't like that call. Jevin Miller made the tackle. I don't like the call either. I mean, I, I get it a little bit, but play to win. You can you can exploit the matchups with your big tight ends. You like your receivers outside. You got a quarterback that's in rhythm and hot. Let him go throw. Well, this might be a statement about how little confidence they have in the two kickers who have attempted field goals this year and a combined two for six. They're going for it on fourth down and eight. From the Cyclone 16, timeout called. Iowa State called it. I wonder if Kirk Ferentz might use that opportunity to rethink this decision. We're back at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Fourth down and eight. And even after the timeout, Kirk Ferentz is still going to go for this fourth and eight from the Iowa State 16. They've tried two field goal kickers this year. They both struggled to combine two for six. It'll be a 33-yard field goal. They're not going to try it. Jacob Hillier goes in motion. Three wide receivers. Rudock, lots of time, We're running out of time. Throws, and it is caught in traffic for a first down to the six-yard line. Terrific catch by Hillier. Fourth catch of the year for the junior from Somerset, Texas. Knowing where you are on the field, Rulock does a great job of not crossing the line of scrimmage, showing like he's going to run, pulls back, and has the poise to deliver the football, Todd. And Chris, resetting his feet, too. You talked about the confidence he's showing this year compared to what we saw a year ago. It's night and day. Sam E. Richardson, one of two Sam Richardsons on that team, had the coverage, and he's lucky, is Rudock, that that Sam Richardson didn't pick it off. Sam E. is kicking himself mm. because he does not go for the slant. He's reading Rudock's eyes. Rudock does a mistake by staring his guy down all the way, and from the corner position, jumping the flat route. You've got to make a play in a rivalry game when you have that opportunity. Well, he's a junior. He doesn't have a career interception, and that might be why. Second and goal. Two tight ends and the fullback, John Kenny, on the field. Weissman following Kenny. And the entire <laughs> Iowa State defense had a pretty good idea. The ball was going to Weissman in that formation. Jevin Miller made the stop. And Corey Morrissey at the bottom of the pile again. This Iowa State defense settled down after week one. They moved Jevin Miller from their Will linebacker into their Mike linebacker. Handles all the communications and is averaging 10 tackles a game. Instinctive player number 55, Jevin Miller. Third down and goal. Tenth play of the drive. Their touchdown drive was 16 plays. Five tackles already for Corey Morrissey. Option for Rudolph. He keeps it and scores. Flag down on the play. 
Back at the line of scrimmage. There the umpire, quick indication of holding. Holding, number 93, defense. Ooh. The penalty is declined. The play resulted in a touchdown. We get a lot of those Sean holding calls because his job is to keep linebackers clean and to force a double team to stay on them. Take a look at number 93, Jensen. He's inside and he's holding and spinning around Jordan Walsh, 65. And what a good athletic play by Rudock. Running the option, making the right read to keep it and score. Mick Ellis, the freshman. Kicks the extra point. He's taken over from Marshall Kane, who was the starting place kicker at the beginning of the year. So another nifty drive. The Hawkeyes are three for three on fourth down today, and they lead 14 to three. <laughs> Iowa now leads 14 to three on a touchdown run by Jake Rudock. If you missed it. Video of the touchdown is now posted on the Sports Center app available on your mobile devices and tablets whenever you need it. Five yard touchdown run, having a 10 play drive. Marshall Kane kicks off, another touchback. Well, Todd, Brandon Sheriff, a question mark during the week. How would you evaluate what he's done so far today? You know, he had the one sack allowed, but I don't know that it had any, that it, anything to do with the knee injury. Talk about toughness you saw during warm-ups. Has the mobility. He still has the strength. You see there mirroring and sliding and pass protection. And just the fact that he's out here. Again, he could have come out early a year ago and been a late first-round draft pick and collected a lot of money. Chose not to because he wanted to come back and get better and help this Iowa football team. He could have easily chosen to sit out two or three weeks to make sure he was right and chose to be on the field with his teammates. Really impressed with Brandon Sheriff and what he's done so far today and all week long getting ready for this game. From the 25, Richardson swings one out. It's dropped by E.J. Bibbs. And it's an incomplete pass, not a lateral. Spearman did what you should do. Pick it up and run with it. Again, Mark Mangino wants to get his athletes involved. E.J. Bibbs, they feel, can be a weapon on this offense. The ball was a little behind, but certainly has the ability to catch. And Iowa State has to finish that play like Spearman did because you never know. Richardson started 5 for 5. He's now 0 for his last 6. Well, he's got a couple that should have been caught, including that one. Back on target there to Jarvis West. Jarvis West picks up some blocks and with some nifty running, he's across midfield to the 49 of Iowa, where Bo Bauer was able to run him down after a gain of 26. Well, we talked about they need to get him involved, and here's why. It's a nice little pick route. It's a high low, and when he gets the ball in his hands, he is dangerous, and he's a threat to score from anywhere on that football field. First catch of the day for West, who had a huge game last week in their loss to K-State. Andre Neely taken down by Carl Davis. West had eight catches last week, including a 17-yard touchdown. He returned a punt 82 yards for a touchdown. He threw a reverse pass 29 yards to Alan Lazard for a touchdown. Uh, he's that uh, college version of your Percy Harvin or Cordero Patterson, that swing guy, that athlete that you want to get the ball into his hands in space. And he's certainly dangerous. On second and six, Richardson throws, and Lazard could not hang on. It got belted out by Jordan Lomax, the free safety, formerly a cornerback who made the shift over to the safety position. It'll be third down and six. He lets this ball get into his body. Great receivers go out and snatch the ball from their body, so if the impact of the blow doesn't knock it out. And right there, the ball gets to his body, and Lomax times it with a good hit to jar it loose. Go snatch that football. Third and six from the Iowa 45. Four receivers, three to the right of Richardson. And a good throw on target to Alan Lazard, who has a first down inside the Iowa 30. Jordan Lomax 
made the tackle. Uh, not a bad play by the guy that was third string coming out of spring, and he earned a job. Richardson in camp, and right there, understanding the offense, Lazard not quitting on the coverage, running and getting the vision of his quarterback so he could make the catch to keep the drive alive. For a 19-yard gain, his first catch of the day. Four catches for an average of 22 and a half coming in. Andre Neely inside the 25. They're playing without Quinton Bundridge, their junior wide receiver, their leading receiver last year, tore an ACL on the fourth play of the season in that opening loss in Ames to North Dakota State. And he's lost for the year. He had three touchdowns last year against the Hawkeyes. E.J. Bibbs, a diving catch inside the five. It'll be first and goal from the two for the Cyclones. They put a tackle out at wide receiver to think everybody's going to run a screen. They throw away from that tackle lined up as a wide receiver. He does a good job of leading E.J. Bibbs away from the coverage where only he could catch the ball. They like to go hurry up here after a big play. They just got a little bit of confusion of what personnel they want in the ball game. 22-yard gain. First and goal, Iowa State. And a timeout called by Iowa. Timeout, Iowa. So second charge of the half. 30 seconds in length. And as they talk things over on each sideline, let's check in with Reese back in the studio. A big win for your alma mater today over Kent State. Lopsided win. But now that loss to Virginia Tech a week ago looks even worse when Virginia Tech goes out and loses at home today to East Carolina. You know, I can't remember a week like the Big Ten had last week. And quite frankly, the MAC is having their way with the Big Ten schools in those MAC Big Ten matchups. The Iowa defense has not given up a touchdown in the red zone this year. The defense didn't give up a touchdown last week against Ball State. First and goal. And there's a ball free in the end zone. Did he cross before it came out? No signal of a touchdown from either official along the side of the field. And Greg Maben has recovered Devondrick Neely's fumble. They're still fighting for the ball. One of the officials was signaling touchback with the indication that Iowa had recovered. The Iowa State linemen, as you see, are telling the officials they think Neely had broken the plane before the ball came out, and that should be a touchdown. I think either way, this is going to be watched very closely by Steve Newman out of the Big Ten in the replay booth. First, the ruling on the field. The ruling on the field is that the running back fumbled the ball before he broke the play in the goal line. The defense recovered the fumble in the end zone for a touchback. And the question is, A, is that the correct call? And will these folks still be celebrating after the replay review? He's covering the ball up with two hands yeah, right there. It's out. That ball's Ex out. It was a good call. Excellent call and a good hit by Quinton Alston on the goal line, number 52. You see this? He's going high, not going low, because if you go low, that guy can just submarine over the top. But Quinton puts the left arm right on the ball, jarring it loose. And Maben gets it at first, and Trinka Passat came out of the pile with it. A great call. Yep. A good hit by Quinton Austin. It goes down and hits his thigh or knee, which is clearly outside the end zone there. And his knee knocks it forward into the end zone. It was a good call on the field. This camera is not right on the goal line, which makes the job of the replay official a little bit harder. Obviously, the officials and TV people wish you could put a camera on every goal line, but it's very difficult to do in many of these stadiums, particularly a place like this where the stands are virtually right on top of the field. I think it was pretty clear, regardless of the angle, that that was a fumble. It's just a you know, self-inflicted wound. You just That's kind of Iowa State. They're close, they're close, After and they have stuff review, like this. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchback. 
That's the first turnover of the game for either team. Paul Rhodes with a quick word from Neely, perhaps to try to keep his spirits up. So they still have not allowed a rushing touchdown or a score in the red zone, a touchdown in the red zone, the Iowa defense. Looked like they were about to. Got alert screen on the first play of two-minute drill. A swing pass, and Bullock gets buried. Behind the line of scrimmage by Kawan Floyd, a junior college transfer from Santa Monica in California. They had the screen out there with Sheriff trying to get Floyd, and Floyd had an extra gear. And guess what? I'd have an extra gear if I saw Sheriff coming after me. Let's see how Kirk Ferentz plays it as we tick down to a minute to go in the half. Inside his own 20 already with an 11-point lead. You would expect the play calling might be conservative here. Quarterback run, quarterback draw. Rudock slides down. Still took a bit of a hit from Kawan Floyd. First down out to the 30-yard line. Again, a nice call. If you get something, you keep the drive alive. And, and if I'm Coach Ferentz, I go. I'm going to win. Trust your guys to make plays. Don't trust your guys to make mistakes. And just one timeout left. Rudock, that's why you have to be careful. He apparently got it back. Trent Taylor knocked the ball out of his hands. He got it back for a loss. Five-yard loss on the play. Trent Taylor did a good job of knowing he wasn't going to get a hit on the quarterback, but has that large wingspan to be able to knock that ball out. Now they're going to just take it to the locker room with an 11-point lead. Rudock threw for 103 on 10 out of 13 and a half, and he is again Iowa's leading rusher with 24 yards rushing and the five-yard touchdown run. Iowa State will get the ball to begin the second half. Pretty even half. Total offense, 173 for Iowa, 146 for the Cyclones, but they made that key mistake late in the half on the fumble. Here's Todd. Coach, your offense has been moving the ball but struggling to finish drives. What do you work on in terms of halftime for the next half? Not fumbling. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're an inch away. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, you you got to punch it in there. Go go, go in down 14-10 with the ball to start the second half. Uh, we're going to need Devon Nini in the second half. He knows that. He'll come back with the right attitude. All right, thanks, Coach. Halftime scores, Iowa 14, Iowa State 3. Let's send you back to Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz. It's the Lexus Halftime Report. Welcome you back to ESPN's College Football, presented by Cars.com. From Iowa City, Iowa, Kinnick Stadium sold out. It's the battle for the Cy Hawk Trophy. The in-state rivalry, Iowa State and Iowa, the Hawkeyes lead at the break. 14-3, Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, delighted to have you with us and rejoined in a moment by Todd McShay. What's your main takeaway from that first half? Well, Iowa controlled the football. You saw 21 to basically 10. Now, if I'm Paul Rhodes, I go to Mark Mangino, my offensive coordinator. We've got to get the ball into the hands of Jarvis West. One catch, and it was an explosive play. I think for Iowa State to be their most effective, he's got to be involved in the second half part of the offense. They moved the ball, did the Cyclones, but had a couple of the key mistakes that really hurt. Good kickoff by Marshall Kane through the back of the end zone. There was a bit of controversy with Iowa State driving in the first half. Third down conversion. Pass interference originally to call against Quinton Alston of Iowa, but then they picked up the flag saying it happened at the line of scrimmage, which it did not. He got knocked down to the intended receiver back to the line of scrimmage. And then later in the half, they fumbled into the end zone when it looked like they were about to make it 14 to 10. It was Neely who fumbled. Devondrick got a pep talk from Paul Rhodes. Just told him to keep his head up. And as Paul said to Tommy Shea, they have, they're going to need Neely in the second half. They're going to come back and win it. 
Sam Richardson came out throwing to Alan Lazard for seven on their first play of the second half. Todd? Yeah, guys, I've been impressed with Sam Richardson. He was the big question mark coming into the season, and after studying his first tape, I was really worried about this Iowa State offense. But today, so far, I think he's done a nice job. He's staying in the pocket, staying with his reads, moving his feet, resetting his feet and throwing. Not great statistics, but I think Richardson's playing not, uh, well enough to win. Everyone else around him really needs to step up for Iowa State. Yeah, he suffered some drops by his players around him and operates with a little more sense of urgency. Swings it out wide. They do get it to Jarvis West. He's very near a first down. Yanked down by Greg Mabin. And it is a first down for the Cyclones. That's the one thing that Coach Mangino talked to us at Richardson was so laid back and just laissez-faire. Now, if you get your sense of urgency, that's why he went to number three in spring to number one to start the season. Throws to P.J. Harris, who steps his way out to the 38-yard line where he ran into Quinton Alston. And Harris signaling to the sideline that he's hurt. P.J. is one of their speedy receivers and Quentin Alston from his middle linebacker position. You see that just falling on the back of his legs to get him down. It's always a tough injury. There's no way to protect yourself when you have somebody hanging on you. And then they throw themselves to the ground and land on the back of your legs. A lot of times we see that happen with offensive and defensive linemen. You can't afford another key injury at wide receiver. We mentioned earlier they already lost Quentin Bundridge. Their leading returning receiver toward an ACL in the first game of this year. Number eight, DeVario Montgomery coming in to replace P.J. Harris. Second down and seven. Sam Richardson throws and it is caught across midfield. First catch of the season for Brett Metters. Redshirt junior from Westlake Village, California. Well, I love the throw because the ball's in the air before he makes his cut, and he trusts his guy to go make the play. And this is the classic definition of throwing him open. Throw to the space and let him run to the football. Richardson now 12 out of 19 for 132. Neely. The ball's out again. His second fumble. The first one came into the end zone at the end of a 74-yard drive when it looked like they were going to score and make it a four-point game. Jamison Locke, the left guard, bailed him out. Want to lose carries? You want to lose playing time? You drop the football. That's the way it is. Right here again, he's got two hands on the football, but Jordan Lomax coming in with power. Knocking it out. That's twice he's fumbled with two hands on the ball. So he's trying, just not executing. And they bring a blitz after Richardson. And the screen was set up. They couldn't execute. Looked like a pretty good call. But the offense didn't execute. Aaron Wimberly, the intended receiver. Third down and 12. It's a right call against the right defense, Sean. They run the screen away from the blitz. They had a wall white set up for that sideline screen. You got right there Jarvis Wetz matched up on Bo Bowers. You got the Speedy West versus the linebacker Bowers. Number 41 in the slot at the top of your screen. Right there. Four man rush. Richardson flushed. Has a lot of running room. There's a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. He dives short of the first down just inside the 40. But there is a flag back. Where you'd expect a holding call against the offense. Another self inflicted wound, if that's the case. He's asking Kirk Ferentz, it would be fourth down. Holding. Number 70, offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay. Third down. The right guard, Daniel Burton, sophomore from Oklahoma City. You see it right here. He's working on a very tough and gritty. Trick of Passat on a little X game. Right there, he's got him around the neck. You just got to almost let him go and trust your quarterback to escape. 
tough call, self-inflicted wounds, which has been the story of the day for the Cyclones. Fumbles, holding calls at key times. Third and 22. And two out of five on third down. Richardson pressured in the pocket. Goes on the run. West has it, but he's short of the first down at the 48 of Iowa. Ten yards short. And the punting team comes on for Paul Rhodes. 12-yard gain. Jordan Lomax and Reggie Spearman made the tackle. So now what you have to do is play field position. And the defense, it's vital to get your offense back on the field to get a three and out. They started the game very well on defense. Now they need to start the second half that way to get their offense in position to make something happen. Colin Downing punts. Good coaching there. They put Desmond King back as a short man in front of Vandenberg over by that sideline. He caught it and probably saved Iowa some yardage. College football action continues tonight on ESPN. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. This is ninth ranked USC travels cross country to take on Boston College in beautiful Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Number nine, USC versus BC tonight at 8 on ESPN also available live on watch ESPN second game of a home and home series USC 135 to 7 at the Coliseum last year here it's 14 to 3 Iowa leading Iowa State in the battle for the Cy Hawk trophy early third quarter first and 10 Hawkeyes and Damon Bullock drop for a two yard loss by Jevin Miller here's Todd McShay you know guys every once in a while I get accused of you know, a little bit too concerned about the height, weight, speed, and the arm strength of quarterbacks because of the NFL draft stuff. I'll admit, I was here watching Rudock coming in, into this game, the quarterback for Iowa, Jake Rudock's done such a good job with the pre-snap reads and his post-snap progressions. He, you see it on the tape coming in, and we've seen it today. He's been so efficient throwing the football, 10 of 13, 103 yards. He completes another pass there. On target to Ray Hamilton. Second catch of the day for the senior tight end from Strongsville, Ohio. Just to support Todd's point, he's talking about the pre-snap reads. What that does, it automatically eliminates certain places where he's going to throw the football. So now maybe his third read or his fourth option or second option, he knows that's not going to be there. So he knows right where to take his eyes as things close down and open up respectively. Third down and five. I think the right tackle was wobbling a couple of times. Ball start, number 78, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And finally, they threw the flag on Andrew Donnell. Well, Andrew gave up the pressure in the, right before the half to Trent Taylor, and he knows on third down, sometimes that'll get in your head and you get a little bit anxious. That's where you got to trust your training and your technique. Trent Taylor will bring some speed, number 98, for the Cyclones off the top of your screen defensive end right there just the second penalty against Iowa there have been only three against Iowa State three-man rush and then Rudolph throws an interception the first takeaway by the Cyclone defense this year TJ Mutcherson with the pick and Iowa State's in business at the Hawkeye 32 two things here Sean the ball gets away from Rudolph and the receiver falls down. Richardson is in perfect position to break on the football. Protection is solid. The ball gets away from him a little bit, then the receiver trips and falls. Richardson right there where safety should be. And good coverage underneath by Drake Furch to force the overthrow. Well, take away the first of the year for Iowa State. In the third quarter, their third game of the season. Can they capitalize? Richardson out in the flat, caught by Alan Lazard. Quinton Alston made the tackle, and they'll come quickly to the line. Now they might want to go back to that play because he had his tight end, E.J. Bibbs, open, wide open in the middle of the field. Now he came off of his read just a little quick, made a good throw, good decision, but that's something you bank if you're an offensive coordinator. Interesting to see if the shadows will be a problem at all for these receivers covering almost half the field now the near side of the field No problem there for Wimbledon out of the backfield Quentin Alston made the tackle 
But he's down at the eight yard line. First and goal, Cyclone, 17 yard gain. And all about matchups. The protection's good, but you're putting Wembley on Austin in open space. And Austin's strength is not his one on one coverage, and that's just a mismatch that they exploited. They haven't scored in their first two games this year in the second half at all. Big reason, obviously, why they blew the lead last week at home against K State when they were poised to have a great upset win. Swing pass. Wimberly banged down inside the four by Jordan Lomax and Louis Trinka Passat. Right, Jordan Lomax goes from corner last year to safety. You rarely see that because a lot of times corners aren't the most physical guys. Well, he breaks that mold. Jordan Lomax will come up and whack you just like he did. He's a good football player. When he got hurt at the beginning of last year, they put Desmond King, the true freshman, in the lineup. King was terrific. So he wasn't going to lose that spot. Lomax became a safety, and he's becoming a good one. They fake the inside handoff to Wimberly. Now Richardson down at the one-yard line. Nate Meyer stopped him, and a huge third down and goal for the Cyclones with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Down 14 to three. The great defensive coordinator Norm Parker now to Phil Parker. They're still the same. Discipline. They don't make mistakes, and they understand the route progression. And he did a great job of jumping routes on that vital second down play. Option. Richardson to the goal line. No signal from the officials of a touchdown. They're going to mark him down short. And a decision for Paul Rhodes. And interesting, Chris, we haven't seen Devondrick Neely since he fumbled for the second time. Ordinarily, he'd probably be in there. Yeah, well. They've had trouble in short yard running situations all season long. It really hurt them a couple of times last week. They had a chance to run out the game against K-State. But they couldn't convert in a couple of short yardage situations. And Mark Mangino told us this week, number one job for him and the offensive staff was to work on short yardage running situations in particular. Well, let's see if they can get the job done. But the problem is their best short yardage runner, their more powerful runner, is out of the ball game, not because of injury, because right now they don't have trust in him to hold on to football. Well, they're reviewing it, so let's see if Richardson broke the plane. Tough to see from that angle. So he's on top of players right there. Now you don't know if he works that ball over. I don't think so with big number 71, Carl Davis and Maben, the corner coming in and doing a great job of throwing his body. I don't think there's enough evidence to overturn that. Let's see from this angle. I think he's already down before the ball gets to the goal line. I don't think there's anything that's definitive enough there to overturn it, certainly. And the call on the field was that he was down just short. Sean, this is rivalry games. I mean, they've already had enough self-inflicted wounds. They've moved, moved the football. They've been in this ball game. Now you get them around. I like the timeout call. You, you rally the troops. You fire them up and say, guys, we want to win this game. Let's I don't go. Think he, they charged him with the timeout because right. of the official review. Paul was going to call a timeout, but then the official stopped it. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's fourth down. And again, the wording stands not confirmed, so they couldn't tell. Understandably so. The fourth and goal. The offense is going to stay on the field. Just one for four and fourth down. We mentioned they have struggled in short yardage situations, and it was particularly a problem last week against K State. He's going under center, so you got to be alert. Sneak. They don't like to operate under center. Could be a problem with the exchange. Nearly still not in the game. Oh, they throw a pass, and Bibbs caught the ball. He was wide open, but Richardson threw it short, and Bibbs. Used all of that six foot three frame 
to catch the ball and undoubtedly this will be reviewed the official right there had a great view of it but did he catch it before it hit the ground yes that's a great catch what a play in the hands underneath the ball yeah and what just a disaster that would have been if he hadn't made the catch the crowd doesn't think he did but I agree with you I think he got his hands under the ball I was calling a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout, Iowa, their first charge of the half. Based on the fact that the replay booth, Steve Newman didn't stop it, right. I think he must feel like he'd already seen enough to be convinced that it was a catch. But Kirk Ferentz calling that timeout, perhaps hoping that the replay booth will take a longer look. You know what? This is just a fabulous call by Mark Mangino. They ran a speed option a little earlier. Now they have the play action off of it. You see Bibbs is going to sneak right here, and he has to do a good job of selling it riding down the line, and he has to throw a very difficult YA tittle jump pass. And right there it is. That's why the ball's a little bit low, but Bibbs does a great job of adjusting for that football and getting the big mitts between the carpet and the leather. Look at that. That's, yeah, that's a, a catch. Yes, sir. Great play for E.J. Bibbs. And... Bibbs has his first touchdown of the season. 15 straight games with a catch. So they take advantage of the interception, their first takeaway of the year, and they turn it into seven points. It's called Netton. Adds the extra point. Mark Mangino said Bibbs might be the best tight end he's coached in 32 years of coaching. The interception by Mutcherson. And then they go. 32 yards and six plays for Paul Rhodes. And Maryland did a nice job in that game of fighting back. Tie it up late. Somebody. Here Iowa State's within four with 6.50 to go. In the third quarter, Cole Net kicks off to Jordan Kanziri. Down at the 23. Matt Swoyer made the stop. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, two reigning division champs meet. LaShawn McCoy leads Philly's dynamic high speed offense against the two time Pro Bowler already. Andrew Luck and the Colts, Monday Night Football, 8 15 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. No other night is Monday night. The Eagles are the only NFC East team to win their season opener. They had to come from way down to beat. Jacksonville. Talk about young quarterbacks. Not only Andrew Luck, but Nick Foles is pretty darn good mm -hmm. himself. Really good football player. Play action pass. Jake Rudock on the run. Has some running room. Takes off running. Blake tackled as he crossed the 30. Jake Doozy gave him a nice block. Another good decision. It's a run pass option. And Jake has shown a lot of athletic ability. He could give it to Doozy right there, but he trusts himself to get more yards with his legs. A safer play. It's still a problem for Iowa when he's their leading rusher. That's just not Iowa. That's not him. Dante Martin Manley got walloped just about as he got to the first down marker. Darian Cotton. Excuse me, TJ Mutcherson, 22, not 23, made the tackle. That's a bad read by Martin Manley. Tavon Smith's out there having the corner pinned, and he needed to take that to the sidelines. Man, they missed that opportunity. Just the second catch of the day for the senior, 140th of his career. Needs 34 to become their all time leading receiver. Pass <laughs> Darrell Johnson Culianos. Rudock carries for a first down. Last week, C.J. Beathard played early in the game by design in the first half, the backup quarterback. The plan was to get him into the game today, but he has not appeared. The coaches say Rudock is clearly their number one quarterback and starter, but they want to get Beathard experience just in case something should happen to Rudock along the way. He'll bring the spread element when he does play. Weissman. Boy, it looked like they were going to drop him for a loss. And he turned it into a nine-yard gain before Drake Birch and Mitch Myers made the tackle. He actually bobbles the ball, which allows him to slow down to make a cut. 
because if he wouldn't have slowed down, Iowa State had it defended to the sideline, but he made a good jump cut right there to get nine yards. You don't think that was the design of the play? Give him the old bobble? <laughs> yeah, just to scare everybody. Toward the line. <laughs> 12th carry for Weissman for just 32 yards. He has it again. Picks up the first down. Jevin Miller made the tackle. This is what they do. I mean, this is their identity. This is how they've done it for years. They just grind you, grind you, grind you. Now, one thing you have, you got Iowa State a little bit worried right now. You had about 13 yards on the first two plays. If you want a little play action or a little three-step just to keep them honest on first down, it's not a bad idea. I was rushed for just 89 yards today against a team that had been dreadful against the run in the first two weeks. Rudock in trouble and pulled down by Brandon Jensen. Fifth year senior from Ankeny, Iowa. This has been the same formation for the past three downs, and it's the one where they hit Ray Hamilton on the on the seam route earlier. This time Iowa State covered it well. A little bit of a setup there by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. They're staying with that formation. Second sack for ISU. They had just three total in the first two games of the year. Played against teams that predominantly run the football in North Dakota State and Kansas State. Rudock throws it away. In the general direction of Ray Hamilton. Third down and 12, Todd McShay. And guys, we talked about the toughness of Brandon Sheriff, the offensive tackle, who had the procedure done on Monday and his return and started in this game. For the first time all game, I'm seeing him limp a little bit and noticeably losing the mobility that he had in the early on in the game. Now, he hasn't given up a sack, and it hasn't been his problem in the series, but watching him the last few plays, he's not the same player that he was in the first half. Well, 70% Sheriff is better than most 100% other guys. Damon Bullock, their third down back in to the left of Rudock. Wally Burnham rushes just three. But Rudock is running for his life, and he slides down behind the line of scrimmage. Well defended, and now Iowa State will get the ball back late in the third quarter, trailing only by four. Now this is the first time all game that Jake Rudock has dropped his eyes in the pocket. Right here, his eyes are not anywhere down the field. He needs to keep his eyes down the field to make a play because his receivers were working downfield to get back to him so he can throw it. Bad Dylan decision. Kid to punt to the dangerous Jarvis West. Short and wobbly. Landed right on the 25-yard line. Took a good bounce for Iowa. Ten yards on the roll. Down by Travis Perry. At the 15-yard line, chance to take the lead on this possession for the Cyclones. Here's today's AFLAC trivia question. We want to know how many college football stadiums are named after Heisman Trophy winners, as this one is after Niall Kinnick. And how many total around the country? Chris Spielman will be Googling it, trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> he cheats every week on the AFLAC question. Sam Richardson with his team down by four. Flushed by Nate Meyer. Takes off running. Scampers for about three across the near boundary. Run out by Quinton Alston. First of all, I prefer I find a way to win. And here's right here. Richardson <laughs> does a great job. Of pulling it down, not forcing anything. And you know what? I love a guy that trusts himself and trusts his legs to give them a manageable second down. Richardson, junior from Winter Park, Florida. Handles a low snap. Throws a strike to Aaron Wimberly. Reggie Spearman made the stop short of the first down by about two yards and as we tick down toward two minutes to go in the third quarter a big third down for the Cyclones. Well I would keep going back to the back on the linebacker especially third short because it's a mismatch. Iowa State plays a soft zone and it's kind of a loose man and you can exploit that coverage all day. Let's see if they worked out again Sean. Back on linebacker. Richardson kept it and didn't get there. Take the inside handoff 
And got yanked down by Drew Ott, a junior out of Trumbull, Nebraska. Terrific player and a real character. He told us yesterday he drove his moped home last year yeah. in Nebraska. 12 hours. Well, if you could drive a moped 12 yards, hours, you have a discipline to play the spread option, then jump the dive, stayed on the quarterback, and he's a big-time player. I really like him on film. He's probably the most second most impressive defensive end that I've seen on film this year. Played eight-man football in high school. He told us there were 11 in his high school graduating class. Four of them were girls. Matt Vandenberg makes the fair catch on the punt by Colin Downing. Graduating at the top of his class was Reese Davis. John, our Dr. Pepper conference update in the SEC Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia. Run. Gamecocks up four. It was the only matchup of this weekend between two ranked teams. Number six, Georgia. Number 24, South Carolina. Really a must win for South Carolina with an eye toward the SEC. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. 14 to 10, Iowa leading. Bullock off the left side for five on first down. All right, Chris, how many stadia, stadia are named after Heisman Trophy winners? Is that for me or Todd? Well, you don't know because you didn't <laughs> cheat. That'd be three. No, you see, you didn't cheat. No, I did This is the only one. <laughs> he won the Heisman, the Walter Camp, and the Maxwell Trophy in 1939. Well, I happen to be counting high school stadiums, so I think I'm correct. <laughs> Well, you're still mad. The horseshoe was in Spielman Stadium. Yes. Perhaps someday. Bullock carries for a first down. And that'll likely be the last play of the quarter. They don't have to snap it again. Jevin Miller made the tackle. A little rhythm with Bullock. The offensive line is starting to reestablish a line of scrimmage. They pride themselves in getting stronger as the game goes longer. It'll wear people down. Leaning on that offensive line and on the power run game. Paul Rhodes and Wally Burnham have to be pleased. The run defense, a disaster in the first two games, has been much better today. There's the Cy Hawk trophy that'll go to the winner of this game, part of the Iowa Corn Cy Hawk series involving all of the sports that these two schools play against each other. The touchdown on the great catch by Bip has made it a one-score game. We welcome you back to ESPN's presentation of college football, brought to you by Cars.com on a gorgeous September afternoon here in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes leading Paul Rhodes in the Iowa State Cyclones 14-10. Iowa trying to go to 3 0. Iowa State's 0 2, looking for its first win of the year after a heartbreaking loss at home last week against ranked Kansas State, which was number 20 as they came to Ames. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Todd McShay. Hopefully, Stormy finds the weather okay here this week after he whined about the drizzle last week yes. in Tulsa. You haven't heard Top complain. No. The sun's too bright today. But that's the upset of the week that Todd did complain <laughs> about the weather. Jake Rudock, non first and ten, crosses midfield and then slides down before he got corralled by TJ Mutchison. What are you thinking, Stormy? Well, for starters, it's real easy to pick fights when you know that the guy downstairs that you're picking fights with has his mic closed. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I've been, I've really, it's almost frustrating watching Iowa offensively because when they've stuck with the running game early in this game, they were wearing down Iowa State, but since then, it's like they've gotten away from it. I think they're going to start focusing on the rush as we go, you know, go in this last quarter in their last two or three possessions. Bullock, they do stick with the run. Jevin Miller made the stop. Here's a big third down. A minute into the fourth quarter. Third down and two. It's a chance for the Cyclone defense to step up. They struggled in rush defense all year. Now you got to make something happen. Fourth quarter, rivalry game. What are you going to do? 
They play power football, and Weissman picks it up. Upended by Kamari Cotton Moya, but it's a first down for the Hawkeyes. Again, it's that surge of the offensive line. Good double team between Sean Wealth and Austin Blythe, number 63 and 79, pushing the nose out of there, creating a bubble for Weissman to hit and get the first. Five-man rush. Rudock dumps it off short. Tight end John Kenny, his first touch of the year. The fullback, converted linebacker. Tackled by Mitchell Myers and Jevin Miller. Well, we're seeing a lot of two tight ends because of, as you mentioned, Sean, making Pleva, the real fullback, out with a shoulder injury. They adjust. Been doing it a long time, Coach Ferentz and staff. Three receivers set for the Hawkeyes now on second and eight. Damon Bullock, the running back. Well, he missed a cutback. Wow, did he miss a cutback? And he paid the price as he got hit hard by Nigel Tribune. You're going to see it open right here. Watch right here and here. This is the spot he should hit. And there's a hole, and he runs right into the defender. you got to follow the guys that have the biggest yellow pants on. Guess what? They're going to clear a path for you. Trust it. Well, they're trying to get the run going. They've run 40 times today, but have gained only 115 yards rushing. There's the 41st run of the day. Bullock spun down, crowd getting frustrated. They're not used to seeing this. Third and seven. Come on. Throw the ball. Play to win. Play not to lose, play to win. And that's a that's a very conservative call when you have some matchups that you like, especially Mark Manley against the linebacker out in that slot. You told us Marshall Kane has the leg to make one from beyond 50, and this would be about a 53-yarder from here into what little breeze there is, but with their field goal problems, Dylan Kidd is going to punt. Jarvis West back deep. Fair catch made at the eight. Kid's done a very nice job in the situational punting today. 28-yarder. Timeout. Tomorrow morning at your NFL Sunday started off on the right foot at 10 Eastern time. It's 10 a.m. on ESPN. Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers with Chris Berman of the gang. All the latest news and updates before you set your lineups. Catch fantasy football now presented by Papa John's at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. All the info you need to set your lineup. Sam Richardson starts this possession from his own eight. The swing pass. Jarvis West out to the 14. Quality gain of six on first down. Quentin Alston made the tackle with help from John Loudermilk. Richardson in this half now is 11 for 12 for 81 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, good decisions. Very accurate with the football today. I, I would keep working the backs on linebackers. Linebackers are playing a soft zone. Let them run option routes. They've been moving the football when they choose to do that. Richardson over the middle and caught by Alan Lazard. First down. Well, last week, Richardson at one point against K-State completed 14 in a row. He's very accurate. It's a nice job of Lazard keeping that streak alive a little bit by adjusting his hips, knowing he's going to take a shot coming across the middle and able to secure the football. It's a gutsy play. A big old split between the guard and center down at the bottom of your screen. Trying to run through it was Wimberly, a short gain, about two. Trick up a stop to stop. Here's Reese Davis. Wow. I believe that's a Miami team that lost to Eastern Kentucky. Yes, Red Hawks. That'd be a tough loss for Michigan if that would happen. Yep. Richardson deep down the field, and West couldn't hang on. He got hit hard at the end of it. Oh, and there's a flag down, perhaps for a targeting foul. Well, I, I watched this unfold, Sean. And Lomax, I think from what I saw from up here, his leg will catch him in the head. 
I think that's what happened. And we'll be able to see it here in a minute. But he did take a shot to the head. Personal foul, targeting on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The play is under review. With Jordan hit Lomax right there in the slot. He's going to run an in route. Maven's going to break, and Lomax is coming over. Mm. Oh, it looks like maybe his form did catch him in the head. But Maben is bringing him down, so he's trying to turn his head away from the target. Yeah, he did catch him in the head. That's tough because he's coming down. And watch Lomax lower his head. And you, there's not much you can tell a defender in that case. The only thing I would tell Lomax, eyes up, keeps your head up. He ducks his head also, but watch Lomax. Lowers head, ready to absorb the blow. And Lomax catches him across the bow. Almost like a forearm caught his head. Very difficult when you have a receiver getting dragged down from behind and your target changes. So that target's head could be moved right into your line of contact without any control that you will have as a defender. Alan Eck on the headset with the replay booth. Steve Newman, himself as a former on-field official, now a Big Ten replay official. Jarvis West did get up and walk off the field. And now they're going through the protocol to check for a concussion. After further review, the targeting foul is confirmed. Number 27 is disqualified. That's become a major point of emphasis. Anthony Gare has come in to take Lomax's place. I don't think Lomax, that the head wasn't the target, but when a defender hanging on him brings him down and the offensive guy lowers his head, then it automatically becomes a target, and that's something that they'll struggle with. Mm -hmm. All the time on that call, and that's yeah, the it's rules. A fine line. Yeah, I mean, they're trying is. to get rid of the serious injuries that come from yep. blows to the head for both the defensive player and the offensive player. But at the same time, there's that old aspect of the football part of it, and a lot of times they're trying to avoid that contact, and somebody ducks when you have that kind of contact, yep. and it's unintentional. But that's the way it is. It gets called. So Lomax is gone for the game. Anthony Gear doesn't play very much is in at his safety position. That's a big loss. Here comes Gare up to make the tackle. Sophomore from Plano, Texas. And Lomax is leaving the field. A nice job by Gare of recognizing the option and automatically knowing that he becomes the pitch defender from 14 yards off. Did a good job of covering space in the open field tackle. It's his first tackle of the season. Second and six from their own 46. Nine and a half minutes to go. Cyclones down by four. Richardson's played very well. Throws, caught, first down. It's E.J. Bibbs again. There's a reason why McShay has him number four on his tight ends list. Right here, they're going to run a wheel route. He recognizes it's not there, then he'll come back and work back to your quarterback. That's experienced wide receiver and a nice job of Bibbs of going up and snatching the ball with the strong hands. Mark Mangino raves about Bibbs' athleticism. Said he could be a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver. 
Richardson had to throw that one away. Loves the attitude. He said, in 32 years of coaching, Bibbs is the first player I've ever coached who probably shakes my hand about 15 times a day, always coming up to me on the practice field. Very engaging young man. First team preseason, all Big 12. One of their team tri captains, JC transfer from Arizona Western. Second and 10. Iowa brings the blitz. It was picked up. And the pass caught by Brett Metters. And there's another high hit by the other safety, John Loudermilk. A rare blitz by Iowa. Richardson exploits it. John Loudermilk comes off of his guy. His head's up. Now the receiver is slipping right here. You'll see him slip. And it, mm, it's close. But John's eyes were up. His eyes were up. That could be the difference maker. He didn't duck his head. His eyes stayed up, mm -hmm. which might have saved him. You're trying to get rid of the using the crown of your helmet. Has the lead. Third down and three, perhaps four down territory. Richardson has running room to the right. That's a great block from Bibbs, has the first down. That's about the third or fourth time where Iowa loses contain. Number 34, Nate Meyer has to keep that ball inside. He jumps inside. Richardson reads it, gets it blocked, like he said, by E.J. Bibbs, who turns from a receiver to a blocker. Allowing Richardson to get the first. You got to stay disciplined in your pass rush lanes. That's what they coach, and that's what they preach. I'll tell you that Iowa State offensive line has done a good job for the most part in pass pro all day, Sean. Devondrick Neely's back on the field now after a couple of fumbles. We've hardly seen him. Richardson throwing deep for Neely. Hangs on to that one for a touchdown. And the lead for Iowa State. We think that's the first play since the second fumble, in which Neely has taken part. And what a time to put him back in. Clearly, they had that play designed for him, and they executed perfectly. And now the extra point good from Cole Netton into the all straight Netton. And it's a three point game. With seven and a half minutes to go. They went 92 yards. They fought, fought, fought. And they went flying into the end zone on the legs of Neely. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. At the end of the third quarter on the field, the 2004 Iowa Hawkeye team honored. 10th anniversary of their Big Ten Championship, which they shared with Michigan. They went on to play LSU in the Capital One Bowl and won the game. You might remember on the last play of the game on a 56-yard pass, Drew Tate. To Warren Holloway was only career touchdown reception. Good time to get it. Good time for Devondrick Neely to get into the end zone. Iowa State leads for the first time today, midway through the fourth quarter. Here's Jonathan Parker. Yeah, these Iowa players have had a hard time staying on their feet. He tripped himself up shy of the 20. Mark Mangino, take a bow. First of all, you're going to run the corner off with this guy. You're going to take this guy matching up with Spearman on the a, on a wheel route. It's something they've been able to exploit all day. You want to vacate the area by getting a corner out of there, which you do. You got the speed of Neely versus the linebacker Spearman. And frankly, it's no matchup. Then when you got a Rick guy like Richardson, who's as hot as he is, that's an easy six. But that's a great play call by Mark Mangino to exploit that matchup and create a play to exploit that matchup. Well, Iowa trailing for the first time today, and bear in mind, if they get in field goal range, they have field goal to phobia here. They don't have anybody who can kick one. And Rudock is belted down to the ground by Mitchell Myers. Had the whistles already stopped the play? And they had, I think, an illegal procedure, and he did not hear the whistle. 
You know, I didn't either, so I, I can't fault him. I think Paul Rhodes is making that argument right there down on the field because I didn't hear a whistle. We, we can hear on the field. There, there were two there. fouls. The penalty for each foul will be enforced. False start. Number 83, offense. Five-yard penalty. Personal foul. Number 90, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Number 90 right here is Mitchell Myers. Now you're going to, there's going to be a whistle. There'll be a little flinch, but Mitchell does not see that. And he's, or he's inside, excuse me. He's playing defensive tackle. He does not hear the whistle to stop the play. Now Jake did, and, and most no, of the other players yeah. did, as you see. And the, well, it was very close to the time of the contact, though. That's hard. Yeah, you, I mean, it's not a dirty play. That's just a hard play, mm -hmm. and things like that happen in football. You clear your mind and go. The officials will be glad when this day is over. Some games are uneventful. This has had its share, including the targeting penalty was a big part of the Iowa State go-ahead drive. They went 92 yards. Cavante Martin Manley made the catch, chased out by Kenneth Lynn, and Iowa picked up eight yards on that play. Nine, call it, second and one. Similar situation to last week when Iowa trailed 13 to 10, drove down in the final minutes, scored a touchdown to win. We asked Kirk Ferentz yesterday as Weissman gets the first down, then gets driven back. If they had been stopped and were forced to try a field goal to tie the game at 13, would he have done that or just gone for the first down? He said, no, at some point you have to trust in the kickers and kick the field goal. But he passed up a 33-yard attempt earlier this year game and went for it on fourth and eight they actually converted it'll be interesting to see Chris if they get a similar situation on this drive yeah absolutely and that's the decision he has to make and eventually you do have to trust your young kicker to either tie a game or win a game for you Rudock throws caught Tavon Smith a big gainer across midfield to the Cyclone 45-yard line. The players for Iowa State are saying the ball is out. And now the official is pointing that it's Iowa State ball. Boy, it took forever if that's the call. And a very nonchalant one at that. Jevin Miller picks it up. With the fumble, we're covered by the defense. First down, Iowa State. Yeah, I think he's oh, down, boy. Sean. It, it, it looked like he was down and rolled over, unless the ball was starting to come out as Miller the previous play ruling of a catch and a fumble recovered by the defense is under oh, further yeah, still have the ball until his right knee is going to hit right here right there the right no, knee is down right now the ball i think first of all that was a, a strike fastball thrown by rudock to smith They're able to get good yardage and the knee is down right there the ball is still in possession of smith and he still has it it's only there now that it starts coming out and it was remarkable how nonchalant the official was who determined he's standing right there. The umpire tab slaughter. Well, that's a no-brainer right there. Very confident Iowa offense is remaining around the football. Yeah, this should be pretty easy for Steve Newman. These officials on the field haven't made it particularly easy for him today. Ferentz clapping. He knows how this is going to end up. Okay, we got to just maybe move that along. Say it's good, boys. Play on. Yeah, this is taking longer than you would think it should. Perhaps they're trying to figure out where they're going to mark the ball. Yep. Or if they're going to pretty much where it was. imagine it would have anything to do with the time remaining. It is interesting. We talk about, you know, most of these great rivalry games, they're within the same league. You know, Auburn, Alabama, and... Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, UCLA, USC, you can go all around the country. Now, these two, even though they're in the same state, play in different conferences. So today it's Big 12 officials on the field, Big 10 in the replay booth. Yeah, I, I, I love the fact that they, they play. I mean, two big schools, the two biggest programs in Iowa, Division I programs, Big 5 conferences going at it. I think it's great for the state, great for the football fan, great for the players. After further review, the receiver's knee was on the ground before he lost possession of the ball. It's first down, Iowa, at the defense's 45-yard line.
Well, for more than four decades, from the mid-1930s to 1977, they didn't play. There's some concern that if these conferences add more conference games, that this rivalry could go away again. Made much more competitive in recent years. Iowa won 15 in a row, a streak that ended in an upset in 1998. Paul Rhodes was on the Iowa State staff as an assistant to Dan McCartney. Rudolph throws it away. Jevin Miller was in hot pursuit. Boy, he's a good player. Yeah, it's all over the place, along with Drake Furch, who forced Rudolph out. And then we come with a rare zone blitz. Wally doesn't like to do this much out in the field, but Furch is coming off the zone blitz, defeats his man one-on-one, -on -one, forces Rudolph out. A good decision by Rudolph. Don't force it, throw it away, live the fight another down. Second and ten. Rudock is 15 for 21 for 137 yards. He had an interception. He's on target to Tavon Smith, who gets nine. You know, they want to run the ball. That's who they are. That's who they've been. But right now, they can't. And they're actually pretty good at throwing the ball. <laughs> and you wonder if. Even though there's plenty of time to keep trying to run, they need to lean more heavily on the pass. Yeah, they do, and everybody knows that they're trying to run the football, and they're not doing a good job. And the reason being, the offensive line's doing well, Sean. They don't have a shake and bake in the backfield. They don't. That guy cannot make anybody miss. You have to be accountable for a man if you're running back. Iowa does not have that man. Third down, a short two. Weissman they have excels that. in these situations. <laughs> First down to the 31-yard line. Where Drake Furch had the misfortune of running into the rock solid Weissman. Yeah, this is just north and south. John Kenny with a good lead block playing fullback. Weissman again always falling forward. That's what they have. But in order to be an explosive running team, you need a guy that can shake and make a guy miss. They don't have it. Uh, they got five deep on that, that running back chart, but not one of them makes a guy miss consistently. Taking down to five minutes to go. Jake Rudock off short through the hands of Weissman. Here's Reese Davis. Kind of had the feeling that South Carolina was going to come out and play well after getting hammered by AM. And struggling against East Carolina. Yeah. Second and ten, under five minutes to go. Again, they're in field goal range for Kane. He has a long enough leg. The question is, would they try it? <laughs> Damon Bullock, the ball carrier. It's the freshman, Mick Ellis, who's attempted only one college field goal. True freshman, recruited on scholarship out of Allen, Texas. He missed a 29-yarder last week when he got thrown into the game against Ball State after Kane had missed a couple of shorties. Now, the last few third downs, I was elected to go conservative and run it. I predict they got to throw it. Get the ball out in space. On third and five, they're trying to throw. Rudolph throws incomplete. They want a flag, and they won't get one. Sam E. Richardson, the coverage on Jacob Hilliard. Sam's looking around. They run a little bit of a bunch route. Good job by Richardson to closing on Hilliard. And coming across with the long arm, not grabbing with the left arm, which is the tendency to do in that type of situation. Well, they're going to try a field goal, but the kicker isn't on the field. Kane, it, it, I think they well, they're trying to decide which kicker it should go. be. And Kane has the stronger leg, Kirk Ferentz told us yesterday, so they run him out. They should call a timeout, I would think, Chris. I mean, it's a pressure-packed enough situation for this young man. High snap, and he made it from 44 yards. Maybe that's what they ought to do every time, have a fire drill when he can't get out there and think about it. He was two for five in field goals prior to that one, had lost his job as the starter last week, and now he drills one from 44 to tie it. Well, he snapped, took it too. That started way outside.
Celebrating its 10th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship funds. Marshall Kane just kicked a field goal from 44 yards to tie it with 4.08 to go. And a touchback. Well, they bypassed a shorter field goal earlier because of their field goal problems this year. And Mick Ellis was going to be the kicker today. Play clock running down. The holder, Dylan Kidd, wondering where's the kicker. Both kickers start running on the field. We saw Ellis, the freshman, the bottom of your screen warming up. But Kane has the longer leg. And he kicked it from 44 yards. I mean, he made an outstanding point, Sean. The fact that he went out there, he didn't have time to think about it. Not even trust himself. Just go kick the ball and have fun. And he did. He drilled that football through the uprights. So it's a tie game. And the ball back with Sam Richardson, who's 15 for 17 in this half. The two touchdowns. He'd almost have a perfect game today if he took away the drops. Very close to it. Aaron Wimberly drags tacklers across the 30. Here's Todd. I would have an update on the wide receivers for Iowa State. P.J. Harris, who went out earlier, he's out for the remainder of the game with an ankle injury. And Jarvis West, their star wide receiver, concussion-like symptoms, he's out. In addition, obviously, to Quinton Bundridge, who they lost the season-ending injury in the first game of the year. So Bibbs and Lazard play big right now. And the matchup between running backs on linebackers. They're deep down the depth chart at wide receiver. That ball almost intercepted. Instead, it's caught by Alan Lazard. And he's out of bounds. With a first down at the 41, yanked out by Desmond King. Well, Bo Bauer had a chance to be a hero. Ooh. Right there, just a little late with his head around and great concentration. Now, this is not easy to catch a ball tip that's coming at you 90 miles per hour. Lazard focused in. He's the star now. Yeah, Ian he and Bibbs have to step up. Highly recruited player, true freshman from Urbandale, Iowa. He was a USA Today High School All-American, highly recruited. Wimberly across the 45 to the 46 before he got spun around by Nate Meyer and Reggie Spearman. Three minutes to go. Three timeouts for the Cyclones and two for the Hawkeyes. And the state's kicker kicked his career long this football game, so he has confidence going into this end. Cole Netton is their kicker. Had a good freshman year a year ago, but struggled on the longer kicks. Made a 47-yarder today. Too high to handle for Aaron Wimberly. And an enormous third down and five from their own 46-yard line for Iowa State. Sean, this is where they have to get for Iowa State. You have to get the matchup with Wimberly on a linebacker. That's been successful, especially in these short yardages. Plus, your big-time wide receivers are out of the ball game. So look for Wimbley matched up against Alston, number 52, to try to work him in the middle of the field. The backup safety, Gare, in for the ejected Lomax, trying to help align the defense. They rushed five and didn't get there, and it's a first down. Brett Metters across midfield to the Iowa 47. You know, one man's loss, another man's opportunity. Take the opportunity, Metters. First of all, it's a nice route. Understands where the sticks are. Does not work back to the ball because he wants to stay beyond the sticks. But when you get a ball perfectly thrown, you'll make a play for your teammates. Sam Richardson, third string quarterback in the spring. The coaches were really down on him. He won the job with a great performance in the summer. And he's been tremendous today. Wimberly carries. Gare made the tackle. And we're going to go under two minutes to play in regulation before they snap it again. Two hundred and fifty five yards for Richardson adds up to twenty five out of thirty five. From the forty three. Four man rush they didn't get close and it's just over the head of Brett Metters. Looked like he was moving open along the near sideline. Defense, notice his defensive line for Iowa is gassed. We talked to Drew Ott, their defensive end, yesterday, and he said, you know, I've played all but about two or three plays in the first two games. They don't rotate guys a lot, and it's really affecting their ability to get to the quarterback as pass rushers. It's 
especially in two minute drill where everything is pass rush Todd and that can drain you in a heartbeat they don't have the depth on the front that they'd like to develop as the year progresses well, they're all crowding up around the line the middle of that defense just beyond the line of scrimmage would be wide open Richardson on third and six incomplete looking for Bibbs is looking for a flag and they'll get it Josie Jewell a backup linebacker redshirt freshman has played very little Going to be a defensive holding penalty. Prior to the pass, holding, number 43, defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You know, Sean, he's in good position, too. It's a matchup that Iowa State runs. You want Bibbs on a linebacker. Now watch what happens. He's in good position. Now, if he grabs some cloth, let's see. Right? Mm, man, I don't know if that's holding or you have your hands on him. But I didn't see a clear hold in that. That's a tough call. Maybe the hook. He might have the right arm around his waist. They're just about at the edge of field goal range. I think Paul Rhodes would try it from here if he had to. Wimberly, the ball carrier. Louis Trink of Passat made the tackle and the timeout called for an injured player, Daniel Burton. Their right guard. So there's Netton who hadn't even attempted a field goal in the first two games. The team did not try any field goals. They bombed one from 47, longest of his career. Timeout. Let's take a look at this week's Associated Press college football rankings. They are brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. The number one team in the country is Idle. Of course, tonight, 8 o'clock. Right here on ESPN, you'll get a look at the number nine team in the country, USC at Boston College. I think one thing you want to make sure here, if you're Mark Mangino, you want that ball positioned in the middle of the field if you do get to the field goal, so that might affect the play calling. I wouldn't think on second down, though. No, but as we progress forward. Second and eight inside handoff, and they lose a yard or two as Wimberly got smacked by Nate Meyer. It's an outstanding job of tackling. Eyes up, head up, bring your feet. Nate Meyer coming on a little twist and staying upright and hitting high. Also coming in to help is Trinka Passat or Drew Ott, excuse me, from his defensive end. Chris, if I'm Iowa, I think about using a timeout here. I mean, you're running the risk of Iowa State kicks a field goal with 30 seconds to go and you have no time left. I think they're trusting that there you go Kirk does use his final timeout well, right should there have been 25 seconds ago yes I and he only did it because they were confused on defense but, I mean time's not a problem for Iowa State it could be a big problem for Iowa here in a matter of moments they could have stopped it with about a minute to go maybe even a little more well we mentioned USC and Boston College tonight eight Eastern time also available live on watch ESPN. It's a very young team for Steve Adazio, but you know they'll play with a lot of emotion on the heights. Steve Sarkeesian did a terrific job. DC trying to beat USC for the first time. Lost them last year. They're 0-4 in this rivalry. Good test for Coach Sark's Trojans to see if they can handle a little bit of prosperity. And a lot of love after the win at Stanford. See, it'll be interesting to see how conservative mm -hmm. Coach Mangino is on this offensive yeah, call. They try just to get a little closer to the field goal, and as you said, maybe get in the middle of the field. Looked like there was movement along the line of scrimmage. There is a flag down. Wimberly carries to the 30, and that could be a huge penalty against Iowa. If they get to repeat the down and get a couple of extra yards, they would have had to try a 47-yard field goal if that play stood. Boy, this is tough, too. The head's line, head line's been indicated early on with an offside call. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Mm. Wow. Replay, third down. Anthony Gare coming up from a safety position, trying to get a jump on the football. Yeah, he's offsides. Tom mm. Farniak, the center, will he help coax him across the line. There's an injured Hawkeye as well. So they move the ball to the 27. 
Louis Trinka Passat has been a terrific player this year for Iowa, senior. He had 18 tackles in their first two games. There was only one defensive lineman of the country who had more through two games, Danny Shelton of Washington. He's been a fixture in that line, 28th straight start up front for Iowa today. It's a, it's a great duo in there. He and Carl Davis, very active. He had four tackles for loss included with those 18 tackles, Sean, which is a lot for a guy that takes on a lot of double teams. Now, they didn't, they didn't mark the ball into the middle of the field. They ran a play to the right hash. Well, the kicker might like it Yeah, from that's there. exactly right. they got to do what they feel comfortable doing. Now it's third and four. You don't need to score a touchdown to win the game. So they'd love to pick up the first down, obviously. One thing but if you, they think yeah. they're just going to play to win on the field goal, get it where Nett wants. He's well within his range now. Leg strength is not the issue. No tackle for loss. No drop back. Play it safe. Trust it. Trust your kicker. Two very costly penalties against the Iowa defense. The holding penalty. And now that offsides. Would have been a 47-yard attempt from the right hash mark. Of course, Nett made a 47-yarder earlier. Please reset the play clock. 40 seconds on the play clock. But last year, Netton missed five field goals. Four of them were from 42 yards and beyond. His longest last year was 41 yards when he went 13 out of 18, but he struggled on the long ones. How will they play it on third down and four? And the clock is running. Wimberly the back. Three receivers. Iowa up there trying to stuff the run. Wimberly. More toward the center of the field. Looks like he has the first down, but we're down to seven seconds to go. Oh, nice job by the Cyclone offensive line. Well, it's not a first down now. They moved it back a yard. Fourth and one at the 24. So here comes Cole Netton to try to win it. The only try this year, the 47 yarder. Earlier in this game, his career long. Sophomore from Ankeny, Iowa. Not far from the campus in Ames. These two schools about a two hour and 15 minute drive apart. He hit it well too. And it, you know, kicking's a lot like a golf swing. If you got a rhythm and a groove and you groove a drive and it's smack dab in the middle, your next kick, you're usually pretty confident going into this. Well, he's from Iowa, grew up around this rivalry, knows how important it is in this state. And this is the kind of kick, if you make it, that has your name mentioned yes. for decades to come. Austin Fisher was his holder in high school. They've been working together a long time. 42-yard attempt. Snap and hold are good, and there's a whistle, I believe, before the kick. The kick was no good. But I think Kirk Ferentz used his timeout. Mm. He did. Timeout, Iowa. The kick was missed, but it doesn't count. Sean, he missed it left. So sometimes you're going to see Coach Ferentz right here working with the referee, telling him he's going to call timeout before the kick. Right there he does. I just want to make this point. Sometimes when a young kicker, he misses left. Sometimes he'll overcompensate and miss right on the next one. Let's see if he can regather his steps and thoughts. And, and that, yeah, that was close. Well, anybody who plays golf can relate to that. You hook or pull one, tend to block the next one. He's a good kicker, had a very solid freshman year, as we mentioned, last year. No timeouts left for Iowa. They can't do that again. Snap and hold are good again. This time it is right down the middle. Two seconds to go. 
And the Cyclones are two seconds away from winning in Kinnick Stadium for the second time in three years. The last time they played here in 2012. They went out of here with a 9-6 win. First thing, the execution under pressure. Getting your fundamentals down. Good snap, good hold. And true blue. Right down the middle. Great drive by Iowa State. Under pressure again in the rivalry game. Big players making big plays. The 10 point underdogs they're used to winning as underdogs under Paul Rhodes. This is going to be his 28th win as head coach of the Cyclones. It'll be the 15th win of those 28 when they were the underdog coming in. Barring a miracle, they're going to beat the Hawkeyes for the 10th time the last 17 games in this series. Tonight on ABC, Tennessee's at Oklahoma. Sooners ranked number four, looking very much like a team with a great chance to make it to the college football playoff, be one of the four teams. Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo, 8 Eastern time tonight on ABC. You anticipate a bunch of laterals here by Iowa. Perfect execution by Iowa State. Took more than four minutes off the clock to take the lead. Here come the laterals. Jonathan Parker. They're in trouble already. Vandenberg couldn't handle it, and it winds up in the hands of the kicker. Cole Netton, a fitting finish to this one. Wonder if that's ever happened in the history of the football. You kick the no. winning field goal with two <laughs> seconds to go, and then you recover a fumble to clinch it on the last play of the game. I'm just impressed he was down there trying to get in the mix. Big win for Coach Rhodes in the Cyclone program. After everything, it seemed, had gone wrong, Roy was Richardson terrific today, and they carry away the Cyhawk trophy. They'll take it back to Ames about 130 miles from here. But they were 0 2, Chris. They had the heartbreaking loss last week against K State, a game they easily could have won. They've had a bunch of injuries, and more of them today that took away some of their biggest weapons. But as they've done so often in six years under Paul Rhodes, they found a way to win when it seemed like so much was against them. Todd? Well, Coach, all the wide receiver injuries you've had, it seems like you're able to find some tight end running back match, uh, mismatches. What did you find offensively in that second half? Well, perseverance by the team. Uh, staff, kids, hung together, uh, a full belief that we could get it done. A bunch of guys making plays. I looked out there at the end. We had a true freshman. We had a walk on at one of the slots. I think we had two seniors out on the field. A bunch of guys just stuck together and played hard. Talk to me about Sam Richardson the development I guess over the first three games of the season re re really coming on I, I said a week ago after the loss against Kansas State first two games of the year he played his best games as an Iowa State Cyclone and the next week he'd play his best game as a Cyclone I really believe he did that he's he's really growing up and maturing and Cole Netton obviously your kicker misses the one but the timeout called and then the courage to go and, and make that kick so, so sometimes you're just you're better off lucky uh, uh, to, to get something like that got it out of his system uh, uh, the, the second one looked beautiful thanks coach John Donnie Duncan how about you <laughs> <laughs> well there's a reason why he's so popular among Cyclone Nation Paul Rhodes brings great energy a lot of us got to know him when he gave that speech I'm so proud to be your coach after a big win I have a feeling it'll be a very emotional similar speech in that dressing room tonight final score 20 to 17 the Cyclones are winners USC and Boston College tonight on ESPN now back to the studio